Whether you're into rally racing, Formula One, oval racing, or sports cars, there is a perfect sim racing game out there to satisfy your motorsport fix. Each game has their own perks, and some have come a long way from their humble beginnings, while others are considered classics that will never be matched. This week, I'm covering the bestest sim racing games ever created, old and new, and why you need to play them. Let's start off with a classic rally game that is still considered one of the best. Richard Burns Rally, originally released on PC back in 2004, it's still considered one of the most realistic rally games ever created. PC Gamer Review called it the scariest driving game we've ever played due to the sense of savage speed and acceleration. And thanks to a dedicated community of modders, you can now experience the game with hundreds of additional tracks and cars, including a Yugo. The updates also improve physics, sounds, and visuals. With rally stages that run over 10 minutes long, you get a sense of tension and concentration that gives you practice practical skills that you can use in real life. The only thing missing from this game is Rallycross. Rallycross has become more popular in the past few years, and there's a bunch of new games that include it on top of traditional rally stage modes. The most popular being Dirt 4. Available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, it's the 12th game in the Colin McRae Rally series, and the sixth version to carry the Dirt name. So it's come a long way and has huge improvements over the original versions. It also comes with various dirt racing modes like stadium trucks and buggy racing, and includes a bunch of time period cars like Group A, Group N, and the infamous Group B. However, it doesn't include any WRC cars because WRC has the rights reserved for their own game. But it does have Rallycross supercars and Rallycross lights. Although the Rallycross mode is one of the funnest ways to go rallying, Dirt 4 is less of a true simulator and therefore more accessible to a larger audience. Meaning it's a lot of fun to play and will keep you entertained at all times, but it won't translate into real world skills. The first game to feature a true Rallycross sim was featured in the recently released Project Cars 2. P Cars 2 offers various racing modes other than Rallycross, so I've found the online presence of Rallycross rooms to be sort of lacking. The Rallycross feature is overshadowed by the game's primary focus on road racing. You can race NASCAR, IndyCar, the historical and modern race cars that they've laser scanned into the game. The entire game is supported through VR and the details are incredible. It is truly a motorsport nerd fest. You can recreate historical races down to the T with historical racetracks and multi-group opponents. It's more of a sim than most of the games you're going to come across, so expect a learning curve. I have yet to see someone drive the McLaren 650S GT3 without spinning out on the first lap, but hey, that's how you learn. And the madness engine that controls the game's physics is constantly improving, so expect this game to get better as time goes on. The most popular motorsport in the world, Formula One has the fewest options when it comes to a true sim racing experience with real drivers and real cars from the real world. That's because Formula One has the rights locked in for their own video game series just like WRC. And yes, it's a great game. If you follow the sport, stepping into the shoes of your favorite driver and team can be a lot of fun, especially for me. Racing with Alonso in the McLaren Honda, I can get a real sense for how slow the car actually is and I'll never be rewarded with a first place regardless of how hard I drive. So really, I'm able to learn anger management skills that translate directly into real life. The real upside to this game is being able to learn every track featured in the season. This makes watching Formula One races in real life much more enjoyable because you have a better feel for what's going on. But if you're a diehard sim racer and a thrilling F1 season is what you're after, you can go back in time and find a very special game that will probably never be topped. The closest you're gonna get to a true Formula One season simulation is with a game called Grand Prix 4. The game is a recreation of the 2001 Formula One season. Yes, the season with the screaming engines that everyone can't stop talking about. <laughs> The game was released back in 2002 with a revised graphic engine and updated physics, containing the best wet weather driving experience to this day. It was created by the godfather of racing simulators, Jeff Kremen. Jeff created the first sim racing game to feature a real racing circuit all the way back in the 80s. He was a perfectionist, focusing on the smallest details, eventually leading to his greatest and last sim racing game, GP4. Since then, the modding community has added a bunch of new tracks and fixed a bunch of bugs that plagued the game when it was first released. While you can challenge other people by taking turns per race. Online gameplay was not possible due to licensing restrictions. 
a competitive online racing experience is what you're after, one of the most thrilling can be found in a game I play religiously, Gran Turismo Sport. The game has come a long way from its humble beginnings, and in this latest version, the game is entirely focused on creating a competitive online community. While the number of cars offered in this game is a huge step down from the 1,000 plus cars offered in Gran Turismo 5, it completely makes up for it with its revised online sport mode. Players are ranked on their skills and how fairly they drive, so you're going to be matched up with people on the same caliber as you. That means the racing gets super competitive, and out of all the races I've played online, every single one has been a race to the finish. Yes, sometimes I get matched up with the best players in the world, so rarely do I get rewarded with the first place. But the game makes it clear that it's not about winning. It's about playing fair and improving your skills. And if you're down with that, you can add me on PS4. My username is Greenbrain. Shout out to some of my GT friends around the world. McLaren Design, Mac Dreezy, Ubeezy, Lewis underscore Hamilton. There's too many awesome people in the community to list. And the way the online system is set up, you'll immediately find clean competitive races. Who knows, you might be seeing Donut on Twitch very soon. And I guarantee we're gonna be playing a lot of Gran Turismo Sport. Simply because the online action is so fun to watch. If penalties drive you mad and you're a firm believer that rubbing is racing, which I 100% agree with, you won't find yourself in a sweaty pool of frustration while playing Assetto Corsa. This game does require some skill before racing, as it is more focused on being a true sim rather than, say, Forza, which is considered more of a sim cake. And that doesn't mean it's not a really fun game for a lot of people regardless of their skill level. And don't even try comparing Forza to Gran Turismo. That's a taboo discussion on this show. Anyway, the handling characteristics of Assetto Corsa are highly praised. Their physics engine is made in-house, so it's a huge accomplishment for their developers. It also has spectacular visuals and engine noises that cannot be matched by most games. Their goal here was to create the most immersive racing experience possible, and they nailed it. While the career mode is a bit challenging to say the least, it does have a solid online experience with a decent browse feature and lag-free racing. But you're gonna be running into the same online issues that Gran Turismo 5 and 6 were having with their online rooms. Like maniac drivers that won't leave you alone unless you completely smoke them on the track. So multi-car pileups will be common unless you find a solid group of guys and girls to play with. If you want a true sim with plenty of add-ons and a massive racing community, then R-Factor 2 is probably the best out there. Its game engine by ISI was specifically altered for R-Factor to have an open architecture with tools for modders. This same engine also laid down the foundation for R-Factor Pro, which is used by racing teams and car manufacturers like most of the current Formula 1 and NASCAR teams. R-Factor 2 is the product of these two games and is considered by some to be the best sim racing game out there for serious players. This is the game that G GT Academy uses to train its winners from Gran Turismo before they actually hit the track. It has the most detailed and accurate tire models in sim racing, including things like flat spotting and tire deformation. Although the tracks are not laser scanned like P-Cars 2 and Assetto Corsa, you get accurate racetracks with features like 24-hour weather cycles, drying racing lines, and rubber building. Online is free, and although extra cars and tracks will need to be purchased as an add-on, RF2 is one of the largest endurance racing leagues in the online world. Plus, you can race in whatever kind of league you want. Formula One style cars, NASCAR, IndyCar, historical, custom, literally anything you want. The game is constantly being improved and evolving. So it's a must have for any hardcore sim racer that wants to grow their skills in one platform. Last but not least, the most hardcore game out there is iRacing. This game is the real deal for competitive online racers that want a true sim racing experience with all the rules, trials, and tribulations of real life competition. The game has come a long way since its introduction in 2008, with incredibly detailed laser scan tracks and a serious community of online racers. A lot of pro drivers regularly train in online events, and some of those events offer cash prizes to seasoned champions. Similar to GT Sport, drivers must earn licenses, but those licenses are based on results and avoiding accidents, but not really comparable because accidents are not taken lightly. Climbing the ranks takes a lot of patience and persistence because those accidents have consequences that can set you back weeks and even months of progress. And you don't just buy this game, you pay a subscription to play it, like 100 bucks for two years. But they offer discounts for beginners for one month and three month tiers. But you need a PC to play it, just like R-Factor 2, and some people play on rigs costing well over a few grand. I've heard of rigs going over 150 
50 grand. That's how serious this shit gets. Because of the realism, many seasoned veterans of iRacing have become successful in real life. In fact, professional organizations like NASCAR and Skip Barber Racing use this sim to help train their drivers. That being said, you can't just pop into iRacing and expect to enter a competitive race like you would in P Cars 2, Assetto Corsa, or GT Sport. You're going to need to do some research and watch plenty of how-to videos so you don't become overwhelmed when you first start playing. You'll need to be motivated to learn and to practice. It's clearly the final destination for anyone who has played any of the previous games and wants to take their skills and competition to the next level. So what's your sim racing game of choice? I know there's a bunch of old ones out there that people still play, so let us know in the comments. How pissed are you that it didn't include Forza? Fukujima, what up? Don't forget to add me if you have PS4. And remember, practice makes perfect. Lots and lots and lots of practice. Support us by picking up some of our merch at shop.dona.media. And while you're at it, add me on IG, at Secret Skills. See you next Friday.